Another groundwater example, we're still using Darcy's law in this example as well. So here, we're told groundwater flows through an unconfined aquifer between two streams that are 60 meters apart. The aquifer is 50 meters thick and 12 meters wide. The hydraulic head measured in the western and eastern streams were 76 meters and 41 meters respectively. The soil profile of the aquifer is assumed to be homogeneous and isotropic and has a hydraulic conductivity of 4.28 times 10 to the negative 3 centimeter per second. The flow in cubic meter per day through the un unconfined aquifer is most nearly what? We want to find the flow in cubic meter per day. So let's begin writing what we're given. We have to visualize what's happening, right? So they do this, they give you just a paragraph and you have to know what's actually happened, right? You have to have a picture and I recommend just draw whatever you can draw on the FE and make it like a quick sketch, right? And you should practice that when you do a bunch of these examples. So the way I did this was essentially draw the aquifer first. So let's say we have the aquifer, it's like below the ground right below the top ground surface let's say the top here is the top ground surface and we have a stream right so what i denote it as the we have the up upgrading stream which is on the west right the west is this way right we know let me label that north is up west is this way east is this way and we know south is this way but we're looking at the west so the western stream is going to be what it's going to be 76 meters and that's the head elevation from the bottom so what we will say is draw a stream here this is the western stream it will have a head elevation of a value of what it's the head elevation to the top water surface of the stream so the top water surface is always going to be just the top of the stream so let me denote that here it's going to be the top of the stream here so we know that head elevation red right to the top is 76 meters 76 meters from the bottom so we have that then we know that the eastern stream is 41 meters so the way you read this sentence the hydraulic head measured in the western and eastern streams 76 76 is for the western 41 is for the eastern right eastern so it's going to be the one on the right so we draw that stream it will have a top surface right and we know this is the eastern stream and it has the head is 41 so it should be below 76 that's why I drew it below right it's slightly below 76 so that value measured from the bottom to the top surface here is gonna be 41 meters okay so we have that and we're told that the two streams are 60 meters apart so this is important the two streams are 60 meters apart remember that's our dx right that's the dx distance so let me go the two streams here the distance between them is going to be d the delta x which is the dx and that's going to be the 60 60 meters so we have that and we know that the aquifer is 50 meter thick and 12 meter wide so you have to be careful with this 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 view is a side view right it's a side view of the aquifer but if i draw a uh well let's call it a perspective view or a isometric view of the aquifer or a 3d view it looks something like this let me actually draw it here it looks something like that we have the aquifer we have this thing here the aquifer and it's below the ground surface right let's say this is the top surface where we stand right and we have the streams here right we have a stream here and this stream does something like that and we have a lower stream here right this is the eastern one a stream like that and we know this aquifer it has a width this is the width right the width of the aquifer we'll call it w and the thickness of it is going to be your y it's the thickness 
in terms of that y distance so the thickness of the aquifer is always this distance when you look at it in 3d right so that's the thickness how thick is this aquifer that's going to be that right and the thickness we typically give that the b value and we'll see how that applies later but the b value is the thickness so just note when you have an aquifer if you look at it in like 3d the width is like into the page if you look at a side view it's into the page and the thickness it's like your elevation right but we know we're told the thickness and that thickness is given to be how much 50 meters and the width is 12 meters so we'll label that the width is 12 meters the thickness is 50 meters so we need that because that allows us to find the area right the cross-sectional area that the water flows through it's essentially this area that's the area we need when we use Darcy law and that's the area we're always looking at you multiply the width times the thickness that's how you get the area so we have that and that's taking care of those two values and the hydraulic conductivity is just given that's the k value right k is 4.28 times 10 to the negative 3 centimeter per second so we have that now let's apply Darcy law to find the flow and why do I use Darcy law why do I not use the debut equation because we're not looking at a cone of depression right we're not looking at that cone of depression or we're not asked to find drawdown right so what we will do is just apply Darcy law so we will use Darcy law to find Q and we want to find Q specifically in what units it says in cubic meter per day so we have to be careful with the units right so doing that for the solution I'll write the Darcy equation for us Q equals negative K a dh over dx this dh over dx again is the hydraulic gradient it's essentially the slope of the water table and in this case the slope of the water table does something like this we go from the up to the down this is essentially the slope of the water table this is the I right where the water table is at water table so we're actually like sloping down right we're sloping negative if we draw it this is the western eastern stream so we slope negative in that case that's the direction water <coughs> will travel so water will travel from the top stream where the water table so this is just the extra note but if they ask a conceptual question this water table here it's below it's below the stream right but then when you this water table has to be above the line here you see how this line is above the stream that tells me when the water table this is the water table line here right this is the water table if the water table line is above the stream water is going to travel into the stream so water will try to flow this way but now this is the opposite right the water table here let me draw that the water table here is below right this line the water table line is below the stream so where is water is going to leave the stream right so it will leave the stream it will leave so that's important to know right looking at that when it's below it leaves when it's above the stream the water table line it enters the stream so here we're discharging water here we're adding so that's just a note let's apply Darcy law Darcy law we know that we will first find the dh over dx that's the hydraulic gradient so the hydraulic gradient in this case we know the change dh is your change in head so dh is your change in head I go from the top surface of this the western stream to the surface of this so that gives me my dh value so how do you get the dh value how do we get that you just take 76 minus 41 and it gives you that dh value right so dh is 76 over 41 so what I'll do is even I won't plug it all in so I'll just solve for it here and plug it in later so you do the 76 meters minus 41 meters and divided by your dx so what's the dx dx is given to be 60 right that's the dx the distance between the streams 
So that's 60 meters. So doing that, you do the math there and you get your hydraulic gradient. We call that the I value, dH over dx. That's going to be 0 0.583 meter per meter. So it's a drop in vertical of one meter per a horizontal distance traveled of one meter. So that's essentially your slope. So we know in this case, it's like a negative, right? Because it goes down. So, but we'll just plug it into the equation. Then we do the area. The next step, I'm going to find the area. We said the area is the width times the thickness. Always. So you have to know that. And we know the thickness is called the B value. So the thickness is the B value. Let me just double check if that's correct. Because we know the thickness is the B value because that applies when we use the time equation. But just know the thickness is always your B value. And we'll see how that applies. So it's going to be the width times the B value, which is always the thickness. So what's the width in this case? The width is 12 meters. We're told in the problem statement, 12. And the thickness is 50 meters. So we just do that, right? So you do 12 meters times 50 meters. And doing that, let me see what I get. You get 600 meter squared. So that's taken care of. Then we solve for Q, finally. So we solve for Q. We know the K value is 4.28, right? 4.28 times 10 to the negative 3 centimeter per second. Centimeter per second. So now you have to be careful with the units. We want cubic meter per day. So we want to take out the centimeter and convert it to meter. And we want to take out the seconds and convert it to days. We have to because we want cubic meter per day. We only want meter for the distance units and days for the time units. So I'm going to convert this. I'll convert the K value. And we know how many centimeters. Centimeters is here. We have to put centimeters here. How many centimeters are in one meter? It's always 100 centimeter in one meter. So these cancel. Then how many seconds are in a day, right? So this one is good to know. How many seconds are in a day? There's 86,400 seconds in one day. So that's always, a, that's a handy, a very handy one to know. Write down your equation sheet and know that. And there's another one to know. There's 3,600 seconds in what? In one hour, right? In one hour. So that's also a good one to know. These are very common, right? So we know what we will do is say there's 86,400 seconds in one day. Okay. So the seconds cancel and what we get is meter per day. And that's what we want. That's correct. So this whole thing is actually the conversion for what? For the K value. Because I want it in meter per day. I want cubic meter per day at the end. So I need meter per day here, right? So we've taken care of that. Then we multiply by A and multiply by DH over DX. So the A value we said is 600 meters squared. And we multiply by DH over DX, the gradient, which is this 0 0.583 meter per meter. Close that. So that looks good. We have here meter per meter just cancel, right? Then we have meter times meter squared is cubic meter. We have days on bottom. Cubic meter per day. So we are doing this good. So it looks accurate, right? So then we solve and we get 1293. Uh, one, 1293 one cubic meter per day. So that's going to be our answer. And let me go above. It should be B. Nobody, thank you.